This lesson is about base 10 and another base, base 5. Base 10 is what we are all used to, and it's what we use every day. And in a way, we kind of take base 10 for granted because it seems so natural. You've learned it since you were, you know, two years old or three years old. So part of the reason we want to teach the students another base is so that they actually deepens their understanding of base 10. I think about it like this when I was learning uh, foreign language, uh, French, in school, it actually helped me develop a deeper understanding of grammar and English and what's a noun and what's a verb and why do we conjugate them and how do we conjugate them and all those things made more sense when I understood a second language. Well, the same thing we hope is true when we learn base 5, it'll make our understanding of base 10 much deeper and much stronger. So that's the main reason we're teaching these bases and then uh, later on we'll see how it can be used in a practical way. So let's just go quick review of base 10. Um, you know, we use digits to represent different amounts of things. So if I were drawing dots, I could simplify this by making the symbol 1 and 2 dots. We write like this as 2 and we call this 3. And we write it like that until we get up to 10 dots, or sorry, let's do 9 dots. So there's 9 dots and that looks like this. And actually there's situation where we don't have any dots and we call that zero. So we have, that's our normal base 10 system where we have 10, that's our normal base 10 system where we have 10 digits. So we have 10 digits, 0 through 9. And in our system, when we get a 10th dot like this, we don't have a one symbol to represent that, so we, we move to representing numbers in columns. And we have the, the tens column and the ones column, and we call this, not surprisingly, the tens column. And we call this the ones column or the units column. I'll call it units. Okay? And this says that I have one group of ten and no extra units. So we, we take these ten dots and we group them into a bundle and we have one of them, and we place that in this new column that we've created. And we get to say 12 dots. We group 10 of them, we say, oh, here's a bundle of 10, and then I have two left over, so I have one group of 10 and two units, and we call that 12. And we go on, so on and so forth, till we get much higher numbers, and we can have multiple groups of 10. So if I had 23 dots, I would say, well, here's a group of 10 dots, and I can find another 10 dots, and I'll have three left over, and I'm going to write that as two tens and three. And in English, we don't call this two tens. We call it 20, but it means two groups of 10 and a three. So that's, that's a quick summary of base 10. Uh, we all kind of understand that, but it's useful to go through it. Now, if I try and do the same thing in base Five. What would that even mean? What is base 5? Well, base 5 is a system where I'm only allowed to have 5 digits. So base 5, so think of this as like an alternate universe where I'm only allowed to use the digits 0, 1, 2, 3, and 4. Okay? It's, it's as if the digits 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 do not exist. Because as I'm counting these same dots right here, I would call, I'd still call this one dot in base five, and I would call this two dots in base five, and I could call this three, and this is four, and here's where it gets interesting. When I get to five dots, I don't have the number five. I'm not allowed to use that digit. So I group this into a bundle of five in the same way that in base ten, I grouped things when I got to 10, right? So I'm going to call this 1 group of 5 and 0 units. So now this became my 5's column. And this is my units column. So what happens when I get to 6 dots? Well, again, I don't have a digit called 6. 
So I group in groups of five, and I see that there's five there, and there's one left over. So I have one group of five and one left over. Now in base 10, this is in base 5, we, it, it looks like an 11, but we're not going to call this 11. We're going to call this 1, 5, and 1, which makes 6. Okay, so the words we're going to use here are 1, 5, one group of 5, and 1. Okay, not, we're not going to call this 11 because to us, 11, although it looks the same, it really means this. Five dots, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. That's what 11 means, right? The word 11. Okay? That's not 11, that's six. It just looks like 11. And we can keep going. So let me just draw a whole bunch of dots here. Five. Again, I'm going to group in groups of five because I'm in base five, so there's a group. There's a group, there's a group, and there's two left over. So that's three groups of five and two, which I call three fives two. Okay? It'd just be like saying 32, but here I'm saying three fives two. Okay? And it means 17 dots. Okay? So base five, it's a little tr tricky. We're not allowed to use any digits more than four, so we have access to the digits zero, one, two, three, and four. And our columns are different. It uses a fives column and a units column instead of a tens column and a units column. Pennies and nickels. Because nickels are worth five, and pennies are worth one. So this is kind of a nice concrete model to think about base 5. So if I have 8 pennies, the rule in base 5 is you always trade out. If I want to convert this to base 5, you're going to trade out for as many nickels as you can. You're going to find the groups of 5. So this is going to be 1 nickel and 3 pennies, Okay, which in shorthand I could write like this. And I put a little 5 here to tell me that that's base 5. Maybe I'll put a circle around it so I don't get confused. Okay? So this is the 5's column. 1, 5, and 3 is 8. That makes sense. Okay? If I had 22 pennies and I wanted to convert that to base, oops, base 5, I would say, well, I can take 4 nickels out of there and I would have 2 pennies left over. Okay, which I can write in base 5 as 4, 2. Again, I'm not going to call that 42 because 42 means something different to us. That's 4 fives, 2, or 4 nickels and 2 pennies. It really means that I have 22 pennies or 22 cents. All right, let's go to a bigger number, like 27 pennies. And we'll see what's going to happen here. If I were just trading for nickels and pennies, I would say, well, I have five nickels and two pennies. But remember, in base five, I am not allowed to ever have, the, there's no digit five. It doesn't exist. So I need to trade out again. Well, what's five nickels equal to? Five nickels is equal to one quarter and zero nickels and two pennies. So in base 5, I would write this as 1, 0, 2, that's in base 5, and this would be my, this then becomes my quarters column, or my 25 column, this is my nickel, or 5 column, and this is my penny, or 1 column, okay? So the analogy to base 10 is still there, I have a units column, I have the fives column, and when I get to five sets of five, I move over and I create a quarters column. In base 10, we would call that the hundreds, right? 10 sets of 10 is 100. Same thing. So this is base, time, base five using something concrete like quarters, nickels, and pennies to explain it. And hopefully that makes some sense. Now I can start doing conversions if I want. And 
So let's say I have the number 2, 1, 3 in base 5, and I want to convert it to base 10. Okay. Well, all I have to do is think, well, these are quarters, these are nickels, and these are pennies. Well, two quarters is 50 cents, a nickel is 5 cents, and three pennies is 3 cents, so this is 58 in base 10, what we're used to. And that I can call 58 because that's in base 10. This I would not call 213. That would be 225, 1, 5, and 3, 3 ones. So hopefully that gives you a little bit of an understanding of base 5. And now that you understand, another example of where we could use another base or think about a different base is base 4. When would I ever use base 4? Well, think about cups, quarts, and gallons. Okay? Four cups is equal to a quart, and four quarts is equal to a gallon. So I could think about making a number system where it was cups, quarts, and gallons. And any time I get to four cups, I'm going to turn them into a quart. And any time I get four quarts, I'm going to turn them into a gallon. So imagine that I have 17 cups. Okay? And I want to see, well, how many quarts and gallons is that? Well, actually, let me start with something easier. Let me start with seven cups. Okay? Just seven cups. What would that look like? Well, seven cups. I could see that there's definitely, I could take four cups out and make a quart and have three cups left over. So seven cups is one quart and three cups. What about 11 cups? Well, I could take out one group of four. I could actually take out two groups of four, which would be eight cups, and I'd have three left over. So this is what 11 would look like in quarts and cups. Okay, what about 16 cups? Well, that's zero cups and four quarts. But remember, in base four, I only get to use the digits one, zero, one, two, and three. So I'm not allowed to even have four quarts. I've got to regroup that again. So this becomes one gallon, zero quarts, and zero cups. So 16 cups. Now remember, it looks like 100, but it's one gallon, no quarts, and no cups. And then if I went to 17 cups, what would that look like? Well, we already know that'd be a gallon with a cup left over. And I put a placeholder zero there because I have no quarts. And you can keep doing that. So that's one use of base four. Um, another base that gets used in everyday life, another base that we use is base 60. See if you can think about where this number 60 gets used every single day. It gets used when we talk about time. Right? There are seconds, minutes, and hours. The seconds equals a minute, and 60 minutes equals an hour. And so this is base 60 had a hundred seconds, for example, and I wanted to convert it into hours, minutes, and seconds, I would group on 60. So how many 60s are in there? Well, there's one, and there's 40 left over. So that, that would be one minute, 40 seconds. If I had 301 seconds, and I wanted to convert that into hours, minutes, and seconds. If I were good at math and, and then mental math, I could see that there are five 60s in there, so that's five minutes. That would be 300, and there'd be one extra second. And you could keep going. If you had 3,600 3, seconds, that would be 60 minutes and zero seconds. But I'm not allowed to put a 60 in any column because when I get a 60, I have to regroup, so I wouldn't write it like that. I would write it like, because we know 60 minutes is an hour, I would write it as one hour and no minutes and no seconds. So 3,600 becomes...